Lately, there has been an onslaught of eBay accounts being hacked and costing sellers a lot of money. Last year, for instance, one eBay seller was charged over 50,000 pounds in eBay fees after his account was hacked and used to create fraudulent listings that weren't even his. The same thing happened to another seller who lost over 14,000 pounds after someone created fake listings on his store for rare Pokemon cards and Rolex watches. And after buyers purchased the items and never received them, eBay charged the seller in order to reimburse the buyers. Now, unfortunately, attacks like these are becoming more and more common, and they can really happen to any of us. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you what it is that we all need to be doing to protect our own eBay accounts. And really, these strategies can be used for any online account of yours that needs to be protected. Now, I'm going to be covering a lot in this video, but the steps I'm going to show you, they really are the bare minimum that you need to be doing in order to protect yourself. It might be worth it to watch the video right now, like once over, and then come back to this video when you have time to sit down at your computer and set up everything step by step like I'm going to show you in this short tutorial. All right, let's get into it and start doing some things to protect your eBay account. The first line of defense against any hacker is of course the password that you choose for your account. Now most people know that the longer and more complex a password is, the harder it's going to be to hack. But most people don't realize just how easily their passwords can be cracked. For instance, when you sign up for an eBay account, they're going to make you create a password. And that password has to have at least one letter, a number or symbol, and at least eight characters. If you meet just these bare minimum requirements, your password could still be hacked in less than one hour. However, if you make your password just a little bit stronger and a little bit more complicated, then it would take 34,000 years for your password to be cracked. What this means is that the ideal password actually looks something like this. Now, I do not expect you to memorize a password like this, and luckily, you don't have to. And that's because a really important part of your security toolbox involves you getting what's called a password manager. A password manager is really just a program on your computer that stores and organizes all of your passwords for you. So this allows you to have a unique, strong password for every single website while only needing to memorize one password, the one that's used to log in to the password manager. And because these are designed by companies with security in mind, they are encrypted and considered by most to actually increase your online security. Now, there are many different password managers out there that you can choose from. And while I'm not going to compare all of them in this video, I will tell you that most security experts agree that storing your passwords in your browser, like with Google Chrome, is generally not considered a good idea. So instead, I'm going to show you a free password manager that a lot of people use that I also happen to like quite a bit. And that one's called Bitwarden. Now, you can use this for free just by heading on over to bitwarden.com and clicking on the top right where it says get started. You will have to create an account here. You'll need your email, name, and you need to create what's called the master password. This is the one single password that you have to memorize that will then give you access to all of your other passwords once you set it up. Now, this master password is something you wanna keep secret. You wanna keep it only to yourself. I would write it down on a piece of paper and keep it somewhere safe in your house so that you also have a backup of what that password is as well. Now for the password, what I recommend is actually using what's called a passphrase. So if you come over to bitwarden.com slash password dash generator, this will allow you to generate passwords, but you can also choose passphrase and you can find a passphrase here that I like to find one that's kind of funny, so it's easy to memorize. This one says unhelpful, gawk, shanty, yippee, slouching. You can keep regenerating them until you find one that you think you'll be able to memorize. Write it down and then that will be your master password. In this case, is a passphrase, so that's easier to memorize. Once you've signed up for an account, you can search on Google for the Bitwarden Chrome extension and we'll go ahead and add that. 
So that way you can have access to it on every single website. You don't have to go back and forth between your browser and the actual Bitwarden. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log into that. And now anytime you want to add a password into this, you can click right here where it says plus. You can type in the name here. So maybe I'll say like this is eBay. I'll put in my eBay username here, whatever the username is for your account. And then the password you'd fill in right here and click on save. Oh, and then down here where it says URL, you actually wanna type in the URL of the website. So this would be ebay.com, click save. So now when I go over to ebay.com and click on sign in, it will just allow me to automatically fill it by clicking in here and then it would fill in the password as well. This isn't a real account. The other thing you could do is actually memorize things for you as well on the fly. So if you head on over to like facebook.com and the first time that you log in, when you have Bitwarden attached, you can do like email at email.com and then the password, click on login and I'll ask if it wants to save it. So I can click save. So the next time I come, I can just click it and it will automatically populate and allow me to log in. So once you set this up, you'll have all your passwords stored in here. The important thing to remember about this is that because this is memorizing all the passwords for you, you don't wanna be repeating passwords. You want every website to have its own unique password. That is very important because let's say that you use the same password for Facebook and for your eBay account and Let's say there's a data breach with Facebook and now your password is out there in the world. It's on the dark web. Someone can look and see, okay, I know that this email is associated with this password on Facebook and a lot of people repeat passwords. So I'm gonna try the same locking credentials on eBay. And very often that's how people gain access to your accounts is through data breaches on other websites. So do make sure that every single website that you have, you create a new password for it that's unique. So another great thing that Bitwarden has is when you click on it, you can click on generator and it'll actually generate for you a strong password. You can choose how long it can be. You might as well make it as long as the website allows, like about 18 characters is usually a good length. And if it allows, you can have special characters as well. You might as well, because you don't have to memorize this long password, you can just click copy here, use it on the website, and then just have Bitwarden store it, and you never have to worry about memorizing this entire long string of text. The third part of this security equation is two-factor authentication. This is when a website requires not only a password to log in, but also a second method of authentication to prove that it's really you. For example, you can set this up on eBay very easily. So head on over here to ebay.com after you log in, go to the top left where your name is and click on account settings. Now down here, you wanna click where it says sign in and security under personal information. And then you wanna to go to where it says two-step verification. I already have this set up. It might say you have to turn it on or edit it, but click on edit. And you can set up either text verification here or push notifications. Personally, I use the push notifications. I think it's a bit more secure than the text messages, but that does require you to have the eBay app on your phone. But what this will do is when you try to log in to your eBay account after entering your, your email and your password, it will also send a notification to the eBay app on your phone. And it'll say, hey, are you trying to log in? You would select yes and then you would be able to log in to your actual account on your browser. Without that, no one's able to log in. So even if they get your email and password without being signed in on the phone with the app, they actually would not be able to access your eBay account. If you've made it this far in the video, then congratulations, I know it was a lot of information. In fact, I spent a lot of time researching this video and putting it together. So if you found this helpful, please let me know that in the comment section down below. And also by giving this video a thumbs up. But there is one final part of this security equation that you really should be thinking about as well. And that's your email. If hackers gain access to your email account, then they may be able to bypass all of the security on your eBay account and completely lock you out of it. So it's important 
that you do the same security steps for your email account that you did for your eBay account. That means creating a strong, unique password and setting up two-factor authentication. And luckily, that is available with most email providers such as Gmail. And now that your account is locked down and secure, you can go about doing the thing that really matters, which is selling more products and making more money. So if you wanna learn how I do that on eBay using a model called drop shipping, then be sure to check out this video right here and I'll see you over there in just one second.